Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing Vanessa's nails inspired by new jeans. There's this very amazing picture of the girl's new jeans that Vanessa sent me and she's like, what about this? And I was like, let's do it. Um, so yeah, so that's what this set today is going to be. It's going to be inspired by this very one specific photo of new jeans. Um, we're kicking things off by removing her old set, this cute little Karomi set. Uh, I really believe in locking and loading those charms in, so it's really a battle to remove them. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears goes into getting the charms and the jewels off. Um, sometimes if I have a really charm-heavy set, I'll ask my client to let me know when they book in so I can add extra time on because I know I'm going to be um, doing surgery to remove the nails and the charms. Um, but we are starting off with the T-Rex bit from Erica's ATA to remove Vanessa's gel. She has a gel base on. We use the um, Izemi Resin Hard Gel. Um, so we always keep a layer of that on her nails. Uh, so I'm just filing back to that and then moving on to the prep. So pushing back your cuticles gently. I know it looks like I'm attacking them. So fast, fast forwarding the clips will do. Um, so gently pushing back the cuticles and then using the Erica's ATA little nib bit. I love this bit with my whole heart. It's gotta be one of my favorites. It's so good at just like getting under the cuticle, lifting it up and getting all that dead crap off the nail plate that you don't want there because otherwise you get lifting. So doing that, removing all that dead crap. And by dead crap, I mean tissue and cuticle. All the white stuff basically that gets stuck to the nail plate. Um, yeah, this, this little bit is great for getting it in the corners too. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna quickly use my little dust brush and wipe off the dust and then go in with my cuticle nippers. Uh, Vanessa is one of those at home, in between appointment cuticle trimmers. Um, she, yeah, she takes care of her cuticles mostly herself. So I just go in and remove any other little dried skin bits. Um, and I do have a few clients that actually do that, that like to keep a trimmed cuticle, which is totally fine as long as you're being safe and washing your tools and not causing any issues, then by all means. And now I'm just going with my Diami 150 grip file. I always start with the middle finger and check with my clients to see the length that they want. And then I match all the nails in length before diving into the shape. It just makes things a little bit easier for me. And we are swapping things up today. We're going for more of an almondy shape. Which I'd say Vanessa usually will usually do one shape for a few a few rounds and then we'll swap to the other shape or another shape and then we'll swap again uh, a few more appointments later. We like to mix things up and her nails grow so fast so it's it's pretty easy to do that. Um, I think this was maybe a five or six week grow which is abnormal for us. We usually get her in once a month because even then her nails you know grow, grow quite a bit. Uh, and then I'm just going in very gently on speed one on my e-file. Um, everyone's e-files are different, so make sure to use yours accordingly. I'm going in with a uh, sanding band and just lightly buffing over the natural part of the nail. And then I forgot to film this, but I pump my e-file then up to like five and I just like smooth out the gel on her nail. Get off any bits of um, gel polish color that I maybe had missed when I was doing the initial removal. And then our order of Juicy Dumpling shows up because we love Juicy Dumpling, so we gotta take a little intermission to enjoy that. Then I'm going in with my Izemi Neo base in the medium viscosity. This base works great on Vanessa. Not all bases work on all people. Same with not all products work as well on all people, so it's important to find what works great for your clients. And this, I mean, Vanessa's nose. She's one of those lucky people who pretty much everything works on her, but this, this base, we get no lifting, we have no issues. So we're sticking with it. Um, so apply a thin layer of this to all of the nails and then curing before going in with the Izemi Resin 99.9 .9 Multi Version 1 Pop Gel. It's a, a mouthful. But it is one of my favorite overlay products. It's really, really, I mean, you've seen me use this a million times now. It's a real pleasure to work with. It's nice and easy. Um, and because Vanessa is a very, very hands-on person, I do give her a slightly, like not a thick overlay, but I give her a little bit more strength because she needs it. Like she'll just text me photos and she's just like using jigsaws and stuff. I'm like, girl, okay, get it, but watch your nails. Um, actually she said her last 
set was the only set that she's had that had interfered with her life. Um, and that was because the Karomi charms, the little ears that stuck out, she's a, a big crocheter. Um, so she'd get yarn stuck on that. So she had to tape up the Karomi charms sometimes. As I'm mad though, we try to keep her nails as indestructible as possible. Which can you believe for a really long time she had long nails and she wouldn't let me do overlays on them. She just didn't think she needed them because her nails were mostly strong, but uh, she's finally seen the way. And now that's all we do. Uh, so once I do her whole 10 fingers, I'm going in with my file and I'm just going to refine the shape a little bit, even things out, um, take down a bit of that bulk that I just added on and make sure her cuticle is nice and flush. But yeah, because the Izemi product is really nice to work with, it, you really don't need too, too much filing. Um, I find that in comparison to like other hard gels, I use uh, the gel bottle gel pot sometimes. Um, this Izemi product is just, there's a lot less refining that's needed afterwards. It's just so beautiful to work with. So I'm gonna go through, I'm going to file all of her nails, refine them, and also check like the free edge and make sure that's still in good shape while I'm going through filing. And then once I have filed over the entire hand, then I'll go back in with my buffer, or not go back in, I'll go in with my buffer and I'll buff over everything, make sure everything's smoothed out. Um, and this is a great opportunity to go around like the cuticle and the sidewall area to make sure you have a flush finish between the gel and the natural nail. Look how beautiful that looks like, just, I just cannot get enough. Now is where the fun begins. Um, I'm gonna have all the colors and stuff linked below because me trying to remember these off the top of my head, not gonna work, except for this one. This is Lux's Mai Tai. This is my favorite red I think of all time. Um, I don't even, I mean, I haven't placed a Lux order in forever, but I will always have a Mai Tai on hand. Um, the gel, not the drink. It's a drink, right, Mai Tai? I think so. <laughs> uh, so just going in and laying down all the base colors I'm gonna apply two coats of each on each hand. Um, so like I said, this is a new jeans inspired set. So I had previously drawn up the entire set, had everything mapped out on my iPad. So I knew what we were getting into. I had my iPad propped up so I could reference the design as I was doing all of this. And then I'm just going in with a matte top coat. I am going to be doing some airbrushing. So I'm applying the matte top coat just to the fingers that I'm going to airbrush. And I realized I didn't film a clip of it, but on top of the kind of camel colored nails, I'm going to be applying chrome later on. And so after I do the design on that, I actually apply a all, the um, gel bubbles all in one builder gel. And then I wipe that clean before I do my chrome design. I just, I wanted to make sure I mentioned it because I realized I forgot to film it. Then I'm just using a sheer like jelly black to do a plaid design. So I'm just using my um, sissy liner brush to apply that. I love this. I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love this sissy brush. It's got two ends, a 10 millimeter side and a 20 millimeter side. And it's just lovely. And then I'm using the 20 millimeter side for all the line work because uh, a longer brush will absorb any of the like shakes of your hand. So it ends up giving you smoother lines. So especially when I'm doing super fine work like that, I want, I want a smooth line. Sorry about my big head. <laughs> okay, so this is where I've already applied the all-in-one builder and bottle from the gel bottle and wiped it clean. And now I'm going in with the Young Nails Mission Control Black 
paint um, because this has a top coat so it's an all-in-one so it's great for doing chrome work on top of it. So I'm just going in with my pink chrome here and applying that to the little star. And then I'm going to use my Young Nails um, gloss gel as my top coat. I'm going to top coat instantly because I don't want to mess up anything with the chrome. I'm going to apply that. Okay, and then I'm writing. <laughs> so in the photo, there was one of the girl's shirts said Angel. And I was like, I don't know what to write on the other hand. And Vanessa's like, well, Devil, obviously. So I was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's how we ended up with Devil on this hand. So I did an outline with the letters just to make sure I knew where everything was going to get placed and now I'm just like thickening everything up. And I wanted this to be kind of like sketchy looking. And then I'm going in with my One Air Professional paint. I'm using that to airbrush to those few lines on the nails so they're kind of like the sweater nails. My big old head and then I'm using my Really Hot Girl nail stencils the stars to do that And then I'm capping in my airbrush nails with the Izemi Neo Base in the Low Viscosity. This is my favorite product to cap in airbrush. It just applies really smoothly and doesn't move the paint around too much. And it stays. Don't have any chipping, so. Lots of people don't cap in their airbrush with another coat. I always do just to be safe. Um, but do what works for you. Now I have pulled out my sissy clay. I'm gonna make a custom color. You can see my sissy clay pot there is broken. I don't know why I always end up breaking these pots. Um, I'm grabbing a bunch of white and just the tiniest touch of blue, like the teeniest tiniest, um, because I'm going to be making a light blue color. Mixing that up so I can make some little bows. I love making little clay bows. I think they're so cute. So I'm gonna make two of those for Vanessa's nails. Um, but I'm just gonna show you one. I actually recently bought um, clay tools, like for making clay, I don't know, clay sculptures, I guess. Um, so it'll beat the hell of me using this like little palette knife. <laughs> and, it's so cute. and then you just cure this and then it's hard. It's like just like creating charms right on the nails. It's amazing. Uh, and now I'm just top coating. I'm using the Izemi, um, oh my god, Izemi Resin <laughs> Top in Low. It's like the thin viscosity one because I don't really have anything lumpy going on here, so I don't really need it. Anything thicker. I don't need anything thicker is what I meant. Um, so I'm just gonna cure those for 30 seconds and then give everything a good wipe down because these do have a sticky layer on top. And then we'll be done. And there you have it. How cute is this set? A fun little mix and match. Um, let me know what you guys think down below and I shall catch you in the next time.